and so it begins. Hi everybody, I'm Nikki Mara and welcome to my YouTube channel. While I have had a couple of other videos on my channel before, this is my real official kickoff. Now, if you've seen me before, it's most likely from TikTok, where I have established myself as a crazy Disney adult. So if you love Disney movies, the Disney parks, and the brand Disney in general, feel free to hit the like button and the subscribe button so that way you never miss some magic from me. And what better way to start off my YouTube channel than to do the thing that brought me the majority of my audience over on TikTok. So by the title of this video, you've probably guessed that I'm going to be ranking every single Disney animated movie in today's video. That's 63 films in total. Now, before we get started, I do have some disclaimers and some conditions as to what movies I'm gonna be ranking today. But if you just wanna skip right to the ranking, feel free to jump to this timestamp. The first disclaimer is that I am not associated in any way, shape or form with the Disney company and I do not speak for the brand. And the other thing I wanted to mention is this list of movies is just my opinion. So if you see a movie that you really, really love ranked super, super low, that is okay. I encourage you to leave me a comment down below and tell me what's your favorite Disney movie and tell me why. I think a big part of what makes us special and unique as human beings is that we all have different opinions and we're all drawn to different kinds of art. And so you loving a different movie than I love is an absolutely beautiful thing and that should be celebrated. Okay, now for some conditions. The movies on today's list must come from the Walt Disney Animated Studios. Now this studio was previously known as two other names, so just in case you walk onto your favorite Disney movie and see it under a different name, the other two names are Walt Disney Feature Animation and Walt Disney Productions. And because we're only going to be ranking movies from the Walt Disney Animation Studios, this does mean we are going to have to cut some films from other studios. These studios include Pixar, Disney Toons, Walt Disney Television Animation, other smaller Disney studios, and third-party studios, which include like Touchstone, 20th Century Fox, as well as Marvel and Lucasfilms. But if you'd like to see me rank movies from any of those other studios, feel free to leave a comment down below and maybe I'll make a separate video just on those movies. Now the second condition is that the movies are predominantly animation. What that means is today's list will also include some hybrid of animation and live action. However, when the movie was released, it has to have been marketed as an animated movie. The distinguishing factor really comes down to how much live actors are featured in a movie. For example, The Reluctant Dragon and Fantasia contain a small sequence with live actors, but they are predominantly animation. As opposed to Mary Poppins, which is mostly a live action movie that contains some animation. So again, the movies on today's list are going to be marketed and sold as animated movies. And the third and final condition for today's movie list is that the movie can't be labeled as distribution only. So none of the wartime propaganda movies will be on today's movie list. With all of these conditions, it brings us down to 63 films. And with that, we have finally reached the time where we are going to start ranking some Disney movies. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's have some fun ranking some Disney movies. Ah, ready. We are starting with what I am referring to as the F tier. These movies are definitely not some of my favorites. I am so happy that they exist, but I personally don't find much enjoyment out of them and I would generally rank these as some of Disney's weakest animated movies. Starting off all the way at the bottom, very dead last at 63, is Chicken Little. I am not personally a fan of the movie Chicken Little. It's really hard for me to get into. It doesn't hit any of my interest points. And frankly, I find that it's really difficult to imagine Chicken Little and some of the movies that are <laughs> gonna be ranked towards the top of this list as coming from the same studio. Moving on very slowly but surely up to number 62, Home on the Range. Home on the Range is definitely not one of my favorites. It doesn't have a ton of characters, the music just isn't great, and the storyline isn't super memorable. Moving on up to number 61, Dinosaur. Now, from my recollection, Dinosaur is more of an experimental video with the new 3D animation style, but it is very safe to say that this animation is rough and not exactly easy to watch. <laughs> Moving on to number 60, we have Meet the Robinsons. While it's a little bit better than the movies previously stated, it's definitely not one of my favorites and not one that I particularly enjoy watching. Up next at number 59, Treasure Planet. Now Treasure Planet at least has a storyline that I can sort of follow, but the art and animation style, the characters, and frankly the underscoring music is just not some of my favorite. At number 58, Atlantis, The Lost Empire. I don't have much to say other than I like this one only slightly more than Treasure Planet. <laughs> Next, we are moving on up to the C tier. Now the C tier 
isn't necessarily a dislike category. It's more so a compilation of movies that I think are the weaker ones of Disney animation, but they're not necessarily bad by any means. Starting off with number 57, Melody Time. Melody Time is cute, but I definitely think it is the weakest of the wartime era movies. At number 56, Saludos Amigos. Again, I don't have much negative to say about this movie, I just like it slightly more than Melody Time. <laughs> At number 55, Ralph Breaks the Internet. This one is... alright. I think the time between the creation of this movie and when it was released already dated the movie quite a bit. The internet tends to move really fast, and Ralph just didn't accurately show the exact time in which the movie was released. I think it's safe to say that the best part of this movie is the princess scene, but besides that, this movie is nothing stellar to me. At number 54, The Three Caballeros. This movie is very cute, following The Three Caballeros, of course. I think what makes this movie stand out a little bit more is the park presence that these three characters have. If you've ever visited the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot and ridden the Grand Fiesta Tour, you get to follow along The Three Caballeros on their journey. And I definitely think park presence really, really helps with enjoyability of movies. At number 53 is Make Mine Music. And I always say the name of this movie wrong. I always say Make Music Mine because I feel like that makes more sense in my head. But regardless, it is Make Mine Music. This one is very cute and has some very adorable characters. Not as memorable as a lot of the later films, but definitely very cute and worth the watch. At number 52, this one is going to ruffle some feathers and I am so sorry in advance, Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6 feels out of place in terms of Walt Disney Animation. It's really the only superhero movie that has come from the studio. I can confidently say my favorite thing out of this movie is Baymax. I think Baymax is absolutely adorable and he is such a cute character, but the rest of the movie isn't my favorite, which is why it ranks so low on the list. At number 51, Wreck-It Ralph. This movie I like significantly more than its sequel, but it still isn't one of my favorites. I think the message of wanting to break out of your societal role is very special. However, a video game setting is just not something that appeals to me personally. Now that I think about it, you're gonna notice a lot more fairy tales up at the top of this list. I am definitely fairy tale oriented in case that wasn't obvious. At number 50, we have The Reluctant Dragon. Now this movie is very, very cute. I enjoy this one quite a bit. While it's not as iconic as a lot of other Disney films, it is absolutely worth your watch and I definitely recommend you check it out. At number 49 is Fun and Fancy Free. Another wartime movie, but this one I actually really, really love. Mickey and the Beanstalk is just an absolutely gorgeous short, and I think it has some of the best music out of all the wartime era movies. And re-watching Fun and Fancy Free makes me really want Disney to do a fully animated production of Jack and the Beanstalk. I think it would be really cool to see what kind of twists they would put on in today's day and age. At number 48, getting into some of the more recognizable names on this list, Winnie the Pooh. Now, Winnie the Pooh was never one of my favorites growing up. I never really connected to the characters as much, but it is very cute and it's definitely a better watch in my opinion than everything that I've already listed. At number 47, this one is definitely gonna ruffle some feathers, Zootopia. While I like Zootopia and I love its messages, again, it's just not one of those movies that I personally connected with. I think the animation is beautiful and the characters are very strong, but again, in terms of emotional investment, it just wasn't one that I personally connected with. At number 46 is Oliver and Company. This one is very cute. I enjoy the music quite a bit and the characters are adorable, but again, leaves something to be desired in terms of my personal emotional investment. And finishing off our C tier is number 45, Strange World. Strange World is okay. I don't really have much more to say beyond that. In general, it's just sort of a, this movie exists. I like it a little bit more than everything else I've ranked so far again, but eh, it's just a shrug for me. It's okay. And with that, we are moving up to B tier, which is the biggest tier on today's list. While it contains a lot of movies that I really, really love, there are just so many incredible movies that have to make it at the top of this list. So absolutely no hate at all to the B tier today. We are starting off with number 44, The Fox and the Hound. I think this is a absolutely beautiful movie. I also think this movie is very depressing. <laughs> Um, in the first few minutes of this movie, I can't stop crying. Trying not to spoil, but ugh, it's, it's a Bambi situation. And the relationship between Todd and Copper is just so complicated and so many things get in the way of them like being able to be together and have fun. 
It's one that I love, but it, I, I have to be in a certain mood in order to watch this movie. <laughs> Up next at number 43 is Bolt. I like Bolt quite a bit. I think it's adorable. It always gives me this sort of hopeful feeling at the end, watching Bolt and Penny be reunited. Spoiler, sorry. And I really, really like it. There are just a ton of more movies that I like more. At number 42 is The Sword and the Stone. I like this movie quite a bit. I think the, the best part of this movie is the duel between Madame Mim and Merlin. But this movie also holds a special place because the character of Merlin was modeled after Walt Disney, the one who started it all. Up next at number 41, Bambi. Now I love Bambi so much when I can watch it. <laughs> this movie, without a doubt, every single time I watch it will make me cry. It'll make me cry, no doubt. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just not one that I watch in my general rotation all the time, which is why it ranks lower on this list. But it definitely ranks higher than The Fox and the Hound, because at least this one has some happy moments in it. <laughs> Up next at number 40 is The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I personally think this one is a far superior story of Winnie the Pooh. I like the characters a lot more in this one, and I just like the general story arc of it. At number 39 is The Great Mouse Detective. Now this movie is definitely one you should watch if you've never seen it before. The characters are interesting, the storyline is great, and I have nothing bad to say about it. But as I've said before, there are a ton of movies left to go, and I just happen to like all of them a little bit more. At number 39 is The Aristocats. I think the little kitties are absolutely adorable. I love Duchess and Thomas O'Malley and their relationship. If anything, I would just say the animation is a little bit rough in certain scenes, but besides that, I think it's a really stellar movie. At number 37 is The Rescuers. Now, I really like The Rescuers. I think the villain is the first on this list that really stands out. Madame Medusa is a scary lady. But I also think Bernard and Miss Bianca are incredible protagonists, and they really draw forth a lot of emotional investment from audiences. At number 36, the movie that I like to call the black sheep of the Disney animated studios, The Black Cauldron. Now this movie is one of Disney's most forgotten. It's also the Disney equivalent of a horror film. If you don't like scary movies, this movie is not for you. It is incredibly dark, incredibly scary, but when I'm not watching Disney films, I'm also a really big fan of horror films. So this one is definitely one that I kind of enjoy. And in the fairy scene, you might also see a little hidden Tinkerbell. At number 35 is The Rescuers Down Under, the sequel to The Rescuers. Now, this is the only Disney animated sequel that I actually prefer more than its original movie. I think the villain, McLeach, is significantly better than Madame Medusa, and I love the story of the eagle and for Cody wanting to free the wildlife. I think it's such a beautiful message, and I, again, love Bernard and Miss Bianca. I think they're a really great pair of protagonists. At number 34, I'm gonna ruffle feathers and I'm so sorry, The Emperor's New Groove. I really like this movie, but I think the reason it ranks so low for me is because I think its original concept when it was in production was a lot more interesting. It was originally going to be this big, grand, melodramatic musical with a love story at the center of the plot, but it eventually got turned into a buddy comedy, which I'm not disappointed in at all. I just think it ranks significantly lower for me because of what I think it could have been. But we have to give it up for Eartha Kitt as Yzma. So far on today's list, by far the best villain. And Yzma's my favorite part of this movie, with good reason. At number 33, a film that I think is so underrepresented and absolutely beautiful, Brother Bear. Brother Bear has beautiful music, it has a storyline that is absolutely heart-wrenching, and it has a really, really special message at the end. It was one that I definitely didn't see the ending coming when I was in the theaters. Absolutely beautiful and in my opinion deserves more love. At number 32, the first Renaissance film, Tarzan. I mean, besides Rescuers Down Under. Tarzan is of course the last film in the Disney Renaissance. However, the reason why it ranks lower than all the other Renaissance films for me personally is that that while I absolutely love Phil Collins' music and I think it's iconic and incredible for the movie, I do wish the characters actually sang the music. Because I feel like they are songs that could be sung by the characters. Much like Tarzan on Broadway, where the characters actually sing the music. But regardless, Phil Collins gave an incredible performance of all of these songs, and I can't be disappointed. At number 31, Disney's newest film, Wish. Now, I really enjoyed Wish in the theaters. Now, do I think it has the most stellar music? No, 
But I really did enjoy the storyline and I really loved Asha as a character. I think the star was an absolutely perfect representation of Disney magic, and I loved the callbacks and references to previous Disney films. I am a sucker for referencing another Disney film or having a cameo of another Disney character in a film, and Wish did this nonstop in order to pay tribute to all of the films that came before it. So yeah, it falls at number 31 for me and I really love Wish. At number 30, Raya and the Last Dragon. Now, I really love Raya and the Last Dragon. However, I think the thing that knocks it down the most for me is its lack of music. I think this is definitely one of Disney's best adventure movies, but I have to say I am a fan of the Disney animated musicals a lot more. But I love Raya as a character, and I love her little band of misfits. <laughs> At number 29, Fantasia 2000. Now, I love Fantasia 2000 so much. I love how different Fantasia 2000 and Fantasia, which we will get to, I love how different those are in comparison to other Disney films because they don't necessarily have one cohesive storyline. It's a bunch of orchestral music set to animation. The animation was created based off of the music and it makes for a really unique experience. And if you've never seen them before, I highly recommend. That being said, at number 28, Fantasia. I think Fantasia is also absolutely gorgeous and I do prefer the segments in original Fantasia a little bit more than Fantasia 2000. So if you could only watch one, I would recommend Fantasia, but I do love both quite a bit. And both actually contain the segment of The Sorcerer's Apprentice, where Mickey is in his iconic sorcerer outfit that he wears in Fantasmic. To wrap up the B tier, number 27, The Jungle Book. I love The Jungle Book very much. It holds a very special place in my heart, considering it was the last film that Walt Disney worked on before he passed away. I think the characters and the music are so fun and very, very memorable. And I have nothing bad to say about this film. I just think there are other films that are a little bit more iconic. We are moving on to the A tier. These are movies that I absolutely love. However, the only thing with A tier is they're not the S tier movies. So let's get started with the A tier. At number 26, Lilo and Stitch. I think this movie is absolutely gorgeous. It has beautiful music, a wonderful message, and the characters are super iconic. At number 25 is Aladdin. The reason why this one ranks so low, the main protagonist, Aladdin, is not necessarily my favorite because it seems for the first three quarters of his movie, he's lying to his intended love interest, which I think isn't the best look. But overall, the music and the storyline are absolutely gorgeous. And we have one of the best performances that Robin Williams ever gave. At number 24 is Dumbo. I absolutely love this movie. I think it is absolutely adorable, but it does make me cry. <laughs> which is why this movie is a little bit lower. At number 23 is Encanto. I love this movie so much. However, some songs in this movie just aren't my favorite, especially when they're in the same movie as We Don't Talk About Bruno, which is an incredible song. If every song was as good as We Don't Talk About Bruno, this movie would be a lot higher up on my list. I also have to put in here that I love Dos Oruguitas. I think that is an absolutely stunning song. At number 22, maybe to a lot of surprise, is The Lion King. The Lion King ranks relatively low for me because, in my opinion, the first song in the first three minutes of this movie is the best part of it. This story is telling the play Hamlet through lions. And while Hamlet's absolutely incredible, my opinion is that the emotionality doesn't necessarily come across as strongly as with human characters, which is why I significantly prefer the Broadway show, The Lion King, to the movie. I've seen it on a national tour and I think it is an absolutely incredible production and I often don't watch The Lion King because I prefer to watch the version that I think is superior, which is the Broadway version. At number 21 is Robin Hood. I really, really love Robin Hood. I love the characters. I love the setting of England. And again, like Lion King, I think the only thing that could have made this movie jump higher is if the characters were human. That way they could have also had a bigger park presence. At number 20, also possibly too big surprise, is The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. I love this movie. I think Mr. Toad is so zany and crazy and so unlike any other Disney character. 
truly. And I'm so sad that they took out Mr. Toad's Wild Ride from the Magic Kingdom in Florida. It's one I will never miss whenever I go to Disneyland in California. And the story of Ichabod Crane is absolutely incredible. It always reminds me of Halloween time, especially with the Headless Horseman. Again, a frightening experience to some viewers, but I absolutely love it, especially as a fan of horror movies. At number 19, Frozen 2, the highest ranking sequel on this list. Frozen 2 is a great film. However, it is evident from watching it that it was rushed. I will say, in terms of expanding upon the original, I think the costumes for the two Frozen Queens are superior to their outfits in the original. I like the way the music feels like a natural progression from the original, and I like the insight as to the beginnings of the explanations of Elsa's powers. At number 18 is Pocahontas. Now, this movie I feel like comes with some explaining. I rank this movie based purely on the art. The animation is absolutely beautiful. The characters are extremely strong, minus John Smith. However, where I have a problem with this movie is its lack of respect towards the actual historical events. The real Pocahontas, whose name was Matoaka, had a very difficult life, enduring many hardships, and I find the relationship between John Smith and Pocahontas in the animated film to be problematic. But again, if we are just ranking the movie in terms of the art, and if we are focusing on these characters as simply animated characters, then I think it is a beautiful film. At number 17 is one that I feel like I'm going to get a lot of hate for, so apologies in advance. Mulan. I love Mulan so much. I think she is an incredibly strong princess. That being said, I think she is the strongest part of her film. Reflection is an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous musical number. I'll Make a Man Out of You, of course, is brilliant. I think the only thing that could have made this movie rank higher for me was a more iconic villain. While yes, Shan Yu is absolutely horrifying and does some very scary things in his movie, his overall design is just not one of my favorites. He's very grayscale as as opposed to a lot of other villains who have a lot of color. And I think I noticed this specifically because the rest of Mulan has so much vibrant color. At number 16 is Alice in Wonderland. Now, I would argue that this movie probably doesn't have the strongest plot line out of every single Disney movie. However, it makes it extremely unique because, let's be honest, a movie where a character goes to sleep and dreams the entire plot would never be made today because that can be seen from a mile away. However, when it was made in the 50s, whew, it was incredible. I think the music does leave a little something to be desired, but I think the characters are so strong. And this can be seen through Alice in Wonderland's park presence. Alice in Wonderland is the Disney animated movie that has the most meet and greet characters, if I'm not wrong. I'm just really happy that this movie exists. And I would also label this one a black sheep of the Disney animated studios. At number 15, we are getting to the really difficult part of this where I have to rank movies that I love so, so, so much. We're still in A tier. We are still in A tier. But at number 15 is 101 Dalmatians. This is another movie that I feel like is really underrepresented because other than meeting Cruella at like Halloween events at Disney, this movie doesn't get a lot of representation in the parks. But I think the story is absolutely beautiful. The villain, of course, is absolutely iconic. And while it doesn't have a ton of music in the movie, I think the one song it has, Corella Deville, is incredibly strong and so memorable. I am really scared to share this next one with you. At number 14, I can already hear the hate comments, Tangled. I really like Tangled. I think it's absolutely beautiful. My favorite part is I see the light. I think that animation sequence is absolutely stunning. But I think the reason this movie ranks so low for me is that Rapunzel isn't one of my favorite Disney heroines, which I can overlook in ranking this movie because I love Eugene as a character so much. And whatever Rapunzel lacks for me personally, Eugene more than makes up for. But I think in the weird depths of my brain, this movie stands out in my brain as the one that ended 2D animation. And that makes me really sad because I think some of Disney's most magical movies are the 2D animated movies. Don't get me wrong, magic doesn't die with 3D animation, but I just prefer 2D animation. And I always will. At number 13, Cinderella. I really, really love Cinderella. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. It holds the title of favorite piece of animation of Walt Disney with Cinderella's dress transformation. And it deserves it. I could watch that segment over and over. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about Cinderella. I love the music. A Dreamer's Wish Your Heart Makes is absolutely beautiful. I think the only thing I wish about this movie is that 
we got a little bit more time with the prince because he doesn't really have much of a personality. At number 12 is another movie that a lot of people find frightening, but that I really, really love. Pinocchio. I love this story. I love the setting of Italy. Oh, the animation is absolutely beautiful. Also, when you think about the entire segment with Monstro, like that was animated back in the 30s and they drew realistic water. It is just incredible achievement by the animation studio. This movie gave us When You Wish Upon a Star, arguably Disney's most iconic song. Not my favorite song ever, but the most iconic one, definitely. And this movie also has the most villains out of any Disney movie ever. We have Stromboli, we have The Coachman, we have Honest John, we have Gideon, we have Monstro. And I also just think the message of Pinocchio is absolutely wonderful. I think the character has a really strong arc and yeah, I think he deserves to be this high on this list. And number 11, the last and final movie in the A tier, Hercules. The music is ingenious. The storyline is really compelling. And I think the characters are really, really strong. The only thing that doesn't make this movie reach the S tier is the third and final act of the movie. It feels extremely rushed and it reveals a lot of tonal problems. One second we're celebrating because we've defeated the Titans, but the next minute we are sad because Meg is croaking. And our hero doesn't meet our villain until 20 minutes before the movie ends. It doesn't create enough drama in my opinion. But again, I absolutely love that film and have very little wrong to say with it. All right, the time is here. We have reached the S tier. It is time for my top 10 Disney animated movies. These movies are my favorite. I could watch them over and over and over forever. And I would definitely recommend them if you've never seen them before. Starting off with number 10. I'm so nervous to like start talking about these because I just love these movies so much. At number 10 is Peter Pan. I think what this movie does better than almost any other movie is establish environment. We know the map of Neverland. We know what locations are in this magical place. And as the story unfolds, we get to see more and more of them. These places are revealed at the very beginning of the story. So when we hear the name Mermaid Lagoon, we know, oh, we're gonna get to see that. And that's what I think this movie does so brilliantly. The music is also, of course, very gorgeous with Second Star to the right. I think the characters are particularly compelling with Peter Pan very easily being balanced out by Wendy Darling and Captain Hook being a very scary villain. The thing that makes this movie fall towards the bottom of the list, however, is the inappropriate and frankly offensive depiction of indigenous people. If at the point in history where this movie was made, Disney was a significantly more progressive and inclusive company, then I could definitely see this movie being a lot higher on my list. Moving on to number nine, Frozen. Frozen was an absolute phenomenon when it came out. The song Let It Go Alone is enough to have you standing up belting at the top of your lungs. This movie gave us not one, but two Disney princesses. Even though they're not officially included in the Disney princess lineup, we know that they're included. <laughs> These two sisters are some of the most iconic Disney animated characters. The story is innovative and incredible. It's based on a Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, The Snow Queen. And overall, it just does such a wonderful job of establishing environment. I love this movie so much. At number eight is Moana. Now, Moana is incredible. I love this movie so much. In case you didn't know, we're getting a Moana 2 very soon, which I'm also so excited for. I love the music. I love the characters. I love the storyline. Every bit of it just feels so iconic. And what I love about this movie that a lot of people didn't like is that the middle of it is pretty much Moana and Maui on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Yet, it's still an incredible movie. And while yes, the middle of this movie doesn't have a ton to look at, I think the ending with the blossoming of Tefiti is, it more than makes up for it. And it's an incredible finale to a Disney film. At number seven is a very dark film that I think has some of the best Disney music out of any film. At number seven is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This movie has the characters, it has the plot, it has the drama, it has, it has everything you could need, not just from a Disney animated film, but from a film. I love this movie so much, except for the gargoyles. Victor, Hugo, and Laverne are, in my opinion, 
the worst part of this movie. Not necessarily the performances of these characters, but just the characters in general. They were placed in this movie to try to make it more lighthearted when that's not what the movie should have done. It should have stuck with the darkness because that's what made this movie so unique. I absolutely love this film and could rewatch it all the time. But again, it is a little bit scary, so if you don't like scary movies, caution with that one. At number six, potentially my favorite love story ever told by the Walt Disney Company, Lady and the Tramp. Lady and the Tramp is, in my opinion, the most accurate love story to real life that Disney has ever shown in an animated film. And yes, I'm talking about a relationship between two dogs. The music, the setting, everything about this film is just so unbelievably gorgeous. And the characters, you get so emotionally invested in Lady and the Tramp and wanting them to be okay and together at the end. And having them be as cute as they are certainly doesn't hurt. <laughs> Moving on to the top five. Are you nervous? I am, but I'm ready, let's do it. At number five, Disney's first animated feature ever, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I love this movie so much. It holds so much of Walt's magic from his heart. And I think this movie still, even though it has a lot of park representation, doesn't get the love that it deserves. A lot of people label it as a product of its time. And while Snow White is of course not like Raya where she is battling and fighting, Snow White is a really important character to exist in Disney animation. She is the physical manifestation of kindness and love and happiness. And that's what really makes audiences still root for her in 2024. Everything that she says and does comes from a place of love and that being balanced out by the evil queen who is so unbelievably evil for no reason is what makes a dynamic that is just incredibly emotionally compelling to watch. It's often painted as a romance, but in my opinion, it's actually a lot more of a scary movie than a lot of people remember. All right, moving on to number four. Oh, I am so nervous to tell you guys my top four. Okay, at number four is The Princess and the Frog. If you have ever seen a TikTok video of mine, then you know Princess Tiana is my second favorite princess ever from the Walt Disney Company. I love the music and the characters and the way that Disney created a magical environment of New Orleans. This movie is just very special and I think the story and the music and the strength of the characters shine through. I absolutely love it. I have almost nothing bad to say about it and I am so unbelievably excited to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure when it opens this summer. I just, I just love this film and I, could never get sick of watching it. No, which brings us to the top three. I'm nervous. Okay, at number three is Beauty and the Beast. Now, I love Beauty and the Beast so much. Be Our Guest and Belle and the Mob Song, all just absolutely incredible musical numbers. The story is like, perfectly told to where there's almost nothing that could be cut or added that would make it better, but yet it ended up being incredible on Broadway too, where they made an 80 minute movie, two hours. This is just such an incredible film and the story is beautiful and it's wonderfully animated and I, I, I could just go on and on and on about it. I have nothing bad to say about Beauty and the Beast. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Moving on to number two, a movie that I don't necessarily think you guys are gonna be expecting, but that I feel very confident in placing at number two, is Sleeping Beauty. This movie, you could pause this movie at any point in the runtime and you would have a work of art that could be placed up on the wall. This movie is just pure artistic genius. The backgrounds of all of the scenes, the characters themselves, and the music are so ornate and thoroughly, thoroughly thought about and developed. It's just, it's an animated masterpiece. This movie is just so beautiful. And to be completely honest, I know it's not the number one position, but this is the movie I think of when I think of the Disney magic. I mean, you know, it's Sleeping Beauty's castle that ended up in Walt Disney World for a reason. It's absolutely beautiful. And I will say, a lot of people argue that Aurora isn't necessarily a strong character, but when I watch it, in my opinion, the main characters are the three good fairies in Maleficent. All four of those women are incredibly strong and drive forward the plot of this movie. So when people say Sleeping Beauty isn't necessarily a feminist story, they're looking more at Aurora than the good fairies and Maleficent who are supposed to be the central focus. Also, I'm just gonna say it, sorry, Maleficent's the best Disney villain. She is so scary, 
so wonderfully voiced by Eleanor Audley. There, again, is just so little about this movie that I can think of that I don't necessarily like. The song Scomps Between the Two Kings is like, all right, but like, I can overlook that for how beautiful the rest of this film is. And at number one, I'm like oddly nervous to say it, even though you guys probably already know what it is because of my backdrop and my surroundings. At number one on my list of favorite Disney animated films is The Little Mermaid. This movie is a masterpiece from beginning to end. It is by far my favorite. And while the music, including Kiss the Girl and Under the Sea, are absolutely incredible, and the world building of creating an undersea world and also a world on land in Prince Eric's kingdom, while all of that exists within the film, I can't help but say that the best part of this movie is the character of Ariel. I admit I am biased, I am biased. I put this movie at number one every single time because Ariel is my favorite Disney character. Not only my favorite Disney princess, favorite Disney character, but my favorite, my favorite anything to ever come out of the Walt Disney Company. Ariel feels so deeply personal to me, like I relate to her so much for very specific reasons. When she appears for the first time in her movie from behind the underwater shipwreck, she is just magnetic to me. I can't take my eyes off of this film while Ariel is on screen. I think she is perfectly performed by Jodie Benson, giving us one of the best Disney performances ever in Part of Your World. This is my favorite Disney song by far, and I just feel so lucky to live in a world where this movie exists. I think Ursula is an incredible villain, and I think Prince Eric is also the first Disney prince to really have a personality, not as much as those who came after him, but he's the first one where I look at him and I'm like, yeah, okay, he loves his pet dog, he has a flute, so he's musically inclined. There are things that are interesting about him. And Ariel is just a character that you can't help but root for. She speaks out against these rules that her father has made that are so unfair. And while yes, she is impulsive and does risk a lot in her journey, she ends up winning in the end, and I think that's an incredible message because those who might be afraid to take a risk might watch that and in the end feel like they can do that and still succeed in their wildest dreams. And with that, we have reached the end of my S tier and the end of my list of favorite Disney animated films. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun. Talking about Disney and Disney movies is just one of my favorite things in the world to do. And I'm just so grateful that you took time out of your day to sit and chat with me about Disney films. Again, if your favorite film didn't reach the top, please let me know down in the comments, what is your favorite film and why do you gravitate towards it so much? And while this is my first official bang of a YouTube video, I am not going anywhere anytime soon. I really wanna take the time and invest into this this channel and to create more content than I can over on TikTok. I have a lot of ideas that I really want to give a try and I would be extremely grateful if you would want to come on that journey with me. If you'd like to stick around, feel free to subscribe down below. And you can also find me on other social media platforms, including Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. My handle for everything is Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. Again, thank you so much for joining me today on this journey of Disney animated films. It's making content that makes me feel so happy and brings a little bit of magic to my day. And if I can bring a little bit of magic to somebody else's day, then it makes it all worth it. And until next time, see you real soon.